What's going on? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with the Boston Clinic, and it's how we moving it. Shout out to the YTBC and the LDBC. We all working up in here. Shout out to my boy JB at, uh, over there at Trap House Boxing. Y'all subscribe and uh, Moni Brown TV. Them my boys right there. And um, should we back in the building doing this? Uh, Sergey Kovalev, Sergey Crusher Kovalev versus Slava Lionheart Shavansky going down this Saturday at HBO uh, for the WO light heavyweight title. Now. Um, Sullivan Brer should have been fighting for this title, uh, but at the time he was offered to fight, to fight first to fight Kovalev. He said the money wasn't good enough, and not for a non-title fight. So he's fighting on an undercard, and Shavansky took the fight. And then um, when they announced the fight, the day they announced the fight, I believe, where they were promoting the fight, Andre Ward retired. Um, they put a petition, or they lobbied, they put a petition in to fight for the WBO title. It got approved. And uh, Barrera messed up an opportunity for the fans and for himself, but he didn't know. He said the money that was offering for a non-title bout in this was was not good enough. He said he took his share of tough fights for short money. So if you wonder why Barrera passed up this fight, you know he passed it up because the money wasn't right. It was for it wasn't for a title at first, but he missed the opportunity, and it's uh, he might be fighting Bivol next. And um, you know all power to him. He's on the undercard, but um, we watching. Uh, we here, you know. Shavansky, 19 uh, and 1, 16 knockouts, got stopped by uh, Sullivan Barrera. Uh, Kovalev is uh, 30 and 2 with 20 with 26 knockouts and lost by knockout. Obviously, the two losses were, were to Andre Ward. And, um, you know, this fight has no business being for the WBO title. See, I don't care that Kovalev is fighting for the title. But don't just hand the title off to him versus Shavansky, a guy who wasn't even ranked in the WBO until they petitioned. And then he got artificially ranked at number 10. The only sanction the body Shavansky was ranked in was uh, the WBC. And he barely was ranked in that. So um, that's just a little food for thought right there. But, um, you know, the fight itself, uh, if you haven't seen uh, Slava Shavansky fight, um, he all right, man. You know, um, um, he really ain't nothing special in my opinion. Um, you know, he's a guy that's going to move forward. Um you know, he's a guy that's going to, um, you know, come forward and use the jab. He will use his jab, and uh, he's 6'4", and um, he don't use his height. You know, he does have a significant height advantage over um, Sergey Kovalev, but he won't use it. You know, he's a guy that hunches over, you know, use the jab to come in. Uh, no, Not that much head movement. He will pick punches off with his gloves, um, you know. I ain't see him throw too many body shots, which should be a vocal point of this fight. We'll speak on that in a minute. Um, Sergey Kovalev, we know what he brings. Um, he's good when he, he can keep you at the end of his punches. Um, good jab. Um, you know, good athlete. You know, I think his athletic ability is underrated. Um, you know, he's a good technical fighter. He's technically sound for the most part. He ain't going to go in there and move his head and, and be slick. He He's a puncher that likes to keep you at the end of his punches and be very aggressive. Now, you're talking about the weak points. Uh for Shavansky is um he don't use his height man you know he comes in he don't move his head he's not defensive responsible um he don't know how to he don't have no defense he don't know how to you know slip a punch you know he can slip um a blind man's jab um but one you know but he uses his he comes behind his jab you know he don't use his height um he likes to come downhill and um and, and bang it out but the thing about that is you know when your, when your arms are longer than your opponents, you know, your opponent's shots tend to get there quicker because you're not using your distance, you know. And, you know, I guess nobody ever taught him how to use his distance. And that's one of his biggest flaws. He has been knocked out before uh, by Sullivan Barrera. Um, got up, but got stopped on his feet pretty much. Um, referee stopped it in Kovalev. We all know his weak spot. Um, mentally, he's a quitter, you know, and he can't take it to the body. Um, and he... he uh, he tires out, you know, he, he, he gets, he gets tired out towards the end of fights. He's, he doesn't finish strong, especially if you're able to put some water in the basement, which means hit his body. He, um, he won't, uh, he'll start to fade. And, uh, Shavansky, I ain't seen him throw too many body shots in this, in the videos that I, I watched him, I film, I broke down on him, but he can, I seen him throw a few and he needs to make that a vocal point, you know? But we know if you put an, apply enough pressure on Kovalev, you're able to take his uh, his power, 
be able to get inside, you know, and not be at the end of his punches and beat the body and, and step the tempo up, you know, he'll quit and he can be stopped. Um, point blank, period. And um, talking about what uh, Shavansky needs to do, he needs to do exactly that. You know, he need. I mean, I can't say that he needs to get in there and slip some punches because that's not going to happen. But he needs to come behind his jab like he usually does um, and, you know, get inside of Kovalev's uh, punches. He don't need to stay at the end of those punches. He needs to be on the inside uh, where Kovalev can't fight at and ripping the body. That's it, you know. Kovalev has an excellent jab, you know. But Shavansky's going to need to take that jab away to get on the inside and use his own jab. Shavansky has a solid jab itself and rip the body, you know, and, and step the pace up. You know, if you can't get to the body, you know, step the pace up. You know, you know that's what you're going to have to do. But he's going to have to get to the body and rip the body a lot, step the pace up, and he'll get Kovalev up out there. He got enough power to get a Kovalev up out there. He ain't the puncher that Kovalev is. You know, I would, if I was Shavansky, I would exclusively focus on that body and using my jab and, and, and setting a high work rate. And Shavansky can, shut a, uh, can set a high work rate. He throws a lot of punches, in my opinion. Um, Kovalev, what he needs to do is keep Shavansky at the end of his punches. Shavansky going to try to come in behind the jab, be aggressive. Kovalev needed to just side-to-side -side movement, step over, use the jab, you know, use his power shots, work off the jab. He'll stop this guy, you know. Um, this guy ain't getting move his head. Um, um, you know, occasionally throw a body shot there, maybe a, a jab to the stomach. Kovalev has an excellent jab, as we've seen in the first Andre War fight. Use that jab to be a stable, stable setter. Take away Shavansky jab. Once you take away Shavansky jab, um, that's the only real um, complex thing about his game. That this jab set predicates and set up it sets up everything for his attack. And once uh, Kovalev is able to establish his jab and take away Shavansky jab. It's going to be target season all day for Kovalev. You know, I expect Kovalev to stop Shavansky if he is, you know, 75% of the Kovalev that we knew um, before the Andre Ward two fights. I expect him to stop Shavansky in six rounds. Um, it should be a good fight, but I think it's pretty much a mismatch. But it's a little closer because we don't know what Kovalev has left after Ward made him quit. So we'll see. Uh, Kovalev in six.